Hi there and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire and I'm glad you're here. So today I have a new kind of card to share with you and this I like to call a display frame card. The reason I call it that is when you open it up, it pops up into this great frame that like a kind of a shadow box frame that looks great on display. The person can put it on their desk and look at it over and over. The best part, no specialty dies are needed. I think it's best to see a completed card before we make it. Let's start with this example here. Now it fits nicely into an envelope and when you take it out it looks like a normal 5x7 card. But watch what happens when you open it up. The whole inside pops up creating this fun shadow box effect. But the base of the card stays flat so you can write a personal message there and it stands on display very nicely. Now you could make this a simple shadow box or step it up. I'm starting with this example that steps it up a bit but I have simpler examples later in this video. I also am sharing three different size versions of this card and how to make them, so hopefully you can find one that would work best with whatever products you want to use. Let's start with this example, which is a 5x7 horizontal card when closed. To do this card, you need to start with a 5x7 card, minus horizontal, so you can see the crease is along the 7 inch edge. Now you're going to open up this card and score the front of it one and a half inches from the edge. So just do a simple score line there and fold it. And now you have this one and a half inch flap on the front of your card. It'll look silly, but just stick with me. And by the way, sorry for the big bandage. My finger is healing, but I think it's best to keep that on there for now. Okay, so now I want to do some inking. You could skip this part, but if you want to do any stamping or inking to your card, this is a good time to do it. I'm putting a piece of tape to mask along that score line we just added so that that one and a half inches there on the bottom is showing. On this I'm applying Distress Oxide ink. I just wanted to turn this a solid pool color. You could do whatever color ink or whatever type of ink you want or you could just glue a cardstock strip there. I chose to ink this because I'll be inking the inside also and I wanted it to match. Okay, so now I've opened my card and I'm inking on the back of that front panel. So the one with the fold on it, I'm inking up the back. So I masked along the crease of the card and I'm inking this whole area with Distress Oxide ink, but very uneven. I wanted it to look kind of like a cloudy sky. You won't really see this that much in the final card, so I didn't spend time doing stenciling or making it really look great. I just did a little cloudy look and I use salvage patina and tumbled glass ink to do that. So there you can see what we have so far. Next I want to stamp on the front of my card. Again, I'm doing everything to the front of the card that I want now so that I don't have to try to do it later when there's dimension on the inside. I thought it'd be fun to do polka dot on this white area. Now this is a Concord and Ninth polka dot turnabout stamp. You'll see how to use a turnabout stamp later in this video. I'm not using it as a turnabout stamp here. Instead, I'm just using it as a background stamp. So I'm just stamping it with blue ink, and then I will shift it over and do the rest of it. You can see there's a piece that didn't get it. Then I will stamp it again with some green ink. So remember, if you have a turnabout stamp like this, which is one that's meant to stamp and turn and stamp and turn, again, you'll see it later, you could always use it as a regular background stamp too. So I'll continue to stamp this until I'm happy with all of my dots. I'll do this off screen as we've got a lot to share today. But you could also just use a piece of pattern paper there at the top of the card too. Totally up to you. Okay, now it's time to do that fun pop-up display frame or this shadow box effect. Now I wanted to have some clouds along the edges since I'm doing some butterflies here. But you could just cut cardstock strips to do this if you prefer. I'm using a new uh, cloud die set from Cat Scrappiness. The reason I chose this one is it has this long slimline cloud border. And then there's also these two other cloud borders that are smaller. And I thought I could kind of place them in there and cut and you could tuck little critters behind it. Just a really creative way to make cloud dies cut. Well, I also thought it would work with this card too. I like having those smaller cloud borders and the big one. Now this big one is a slimline die, but you could use it for regular card, which you're going to see me do today. It is eight and a half inches long. A lot of times people ask how to cut these in your machine, because oftentimes the plates aren't long enough. This one would fit at an angle through the machine, but I wanted to show you what to do if yours doesn't fit. 
All you have to do is put one half or a good portion of the die through the die cut machine, then shift it and move it so the part that isn't cut is under the plates and then cut that. And there you have your full die cut. So I die cut a few of these. I'm gonna cut them up and use them in different ways on our card. Those two smaller border dies, that the cloud dies that I showed you, I'll use those later in this video. Okay, so now I'm cutting two cloud borders to be four and a half inches long. These were a little too tall, so I'm trimming them down too. I didn't wanna hide too much of our window, and these are the side pieces. So you need two pieces of cardstock that are four and a half inches long and you're scoring each of these a half inch from the end. If you don't have cloud border dies, you could just do cardstock strips here. Just maybe cardstock strips that are four and a half inches by a half inch wide, and then score them a half inch from each end. So again, these are the side pieces, you need two of them, four and a half inches long, scored a half inch from each end. Very simple, really is like the base of this display frame card. I just thought it'd be fun to use a decorative border die here to make the sides of the frame kind of look part of the scene. Okay, now we need to glue these into our card. So I'm putting adhesive onto one of the little flaps of the border, and I'm using a strong liquid adhesive. And I just tape that right to the corner of the front of the card. See how it's right up against the corner? That little crease there on our border piece lines up with the front edge of the card. Now you can see how it just kind of hangs there. It looks a little silly, it looks like an arm sticking out, but we'll fix that in a moment. And now I'll do the same thing on the other side. I like to use a liquid adhesive here so I could wiggle it until I get it right into the corner and get a good position. You could use double-sided tape if you're more comfortable with that, but Gina K Connect liquid adhesive is great for this. Okay, so now I've got these pieces. I wanna make sure they're straight, so I kind of flatten them and line them up with the end of the card. And then you just wanna give it a bit of time to dry. Just a few minutes, it doesn't take long. I know I'm impatient too and it's hard to wait, but it's worth it. Next, I'm putting adhesive on the other flaps on both of these arms. I will then lay the arms down onto the card, but keep the adhesive facing up. So watch, I'll lay this down, adhesive is facing up. Make sure the arms are lined up with the edge of the card. And now we can close the card, and that will grab the adhesive and connect our card all together. I just like to close this and put something heavy on it or tape it shut for a bit while it dries. Taping it shut really works well, and you can reuse those pieces later on. Okay, after giving that a few minutes to dry, I can remove those pieces of tape and watch. We have our basic display frame shadow box card. I'm not sure really what to call it. And you can see it looks like a little stage. You can put anything you want in there. Now I'm gonna step this up, but you definitely don't have to. Keep that in mind. You could keep this very simple if you prefer. But I thought by showing you different ways to step it up, you can pick and choose what you like. I am putting these little cloud border pieces along the bottom just to kind of smooth out the frame that we've created with the clouds. Okay, now let's add a bit more dimension to this. You see that long cloud along the um, inside bottom there? It's got that bright, large green butterfly stuck to it and three little hearts. We're gonna add that layer in there. It sits between the back of the card and the front of the frame. To do this, we need to create little pop-ups. These are easy and can be used in many ways. The way I like to do it is cut a piece of cardstock that is three inches long and score it at three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, and two and a quarter. And you do that on two pieces. Mine happen to be one and a half inches wide, but you could make these as wide or as narrow as you want. You just wanna make sure you start with three inches long and you score at three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, and two and a quarter. You could even change up those dimensions if you want. What you want to have in the end is what forms like a little square. Now we're going to add these into our card. On one flap, I put adhesive, as you see I've done here. Now I take this and I put it into the card and glue it right up against the uh, crease of the card, right inside there. See how it's glued down on there? Now I could have done this before we assembled our card, but you'll see later it's easier to do it this way, I think. Now I'm going to put some adhesive on the other end of the flap, the other flap on this. So you can see the adhesives on that and I just curl this around and glue this to the other side right up against the crease. So you basically have formed this little square right inside of your card, right up into the crease of the card. 
This is a common way to do pop-ups in any type of card, so you've probably seen me do it in other videos. Now I'm doing the exact same thing on the other side. You may want to just have one little element pop up in your card. In that case, you only need one of these pop-up features, and you can make it narrow so you can hide it if you want. But I'm going to make an entire border that stretches the width of the card. I'm going to make that pop up. So by doing two, I can be sure that it'll pop up nicely. These two pop-ups will be on the end. Okay, so there you see I have a little cube created in the corner of both sides of the card. Okay, so now I'm just going to close this and hold it there while it dries for a few minutes. It's always good to let it dry before you go on to the next step. Now we can glue that long cloud border die cut onto those pop-ups. You'll just squeeze some liquid adhesive onto the front of those pop-ups on both sides. So you just put the nozzle in there and squeeze a little bit out. And now you can add the die cut onto that. And whenever you open up the card, this cloud border will pop up also, adding more dimension. Because it's not all the way on the back of the card and it's not all the way to the front, so we're building that great shadow box feel. Okay, now for the fun part. Let's create a bunch of butterflies to add inside. I am a fan of butterflies and I love the unique look of these. This is the Concord and Ninth Bold Butterflies. There are lots of butterflies in here, even some that have words on them. And what's cool is you stamp like the solid outline and then you can actually stamp the openings in a different color. So even with these ones that have a sentiment, you can do that. But I'm just using the regular butterflies today. And I wanted to show you how I created a bunch of those very quickly. Of course, there are coordinating dies for this and a sentiment strip die that cuts all those great sentiments out nicely. Okay, so I have in my Misty stamping tool here, one of the large butterflies and a piece of white cardstock. I like to stamp it once then rotate my paper and stamp it again. This allows me to create two butterflies very quickly. You could in fact put a small butterfly next to it if you want to, to stamp those at the same time. I first stamped these with light green ink, and now I have a darker green ink that I'm applying to the center of the stamp with a blending brush, and then stamping that multiple times. This will cause that fun gradient feel to our stamping where it's darker in the center and lighter at the edge. Definitely worth doing. Now I'm coming in with the uh, image that stamps in the open areas of the stamp and stamping this with a different color. I love this. It doesn't overlap with your first image. It just fills it in so much faster than coloring. Now I'm using Concord and Ninth inks today and I have a few Hero Arts inks thrown in too. I love to mix up my ink brands. Here I'm coming in with a slightly darker blue, adding that towards the center of the stamp with the blending brush and then stamping that. Again, building that look of dimension. And now we have the body, which I'm stamping with Dove ink from Concord and Ninth, which is a great gray ink. Then we can cut them out and look at those adorable butterflies. After I created a bunch of butterflies, it's time for our sentiment pieces. I use the Concord and Ninth Everyday Sains die set, which I use multiple times in this video. It has this high with the faux stitching, the large hello with the shadow die, then there is this So Grateful die, which cuts it all out connected. And then the word friend that you can add along with any of the sentiments. There are also those little heart dies and these three banner dies that cut I'll be there for you. So this is one of those great universal greeting sets that you can use in many different ways and for many occasions. Okay, now that we have all of our pieces ready, let's assemble the card. I like to first assemble the front of the card and then the inside if possible. So I have this long border here that is seven inches long. It's green and then I put a layer of white on top. I'm going to glue this so it's lined up with that crease on the front of our card. It just gives the card a finished look by hiding that crease. Here I have the hello that I cut from white cardstock for the shadow and holographic cardstock for the hello. I thought it would be fun to stamp a sentiment on the back of this that when you open it up, you'll see. Just bear with me, you'll notice what I'm doing here in a moment. So this is the back of that hello border. I should have waited to glue the hello on there, but this was an afterthought. So I'm putting this into my Misty stamping tool and I'm stamping on the back of that green border, upside down, right along that top edge that you see here. This will allow us to have a surprise sentiment when the person opens the card. 
Again, this was an afterthought. I could have put a little more planning into this and not have all this glued together, but you know, you kind of roll with it. So I stamped that with Versamark ink and now I'm adding white embossing powder and I'll heat set that. Now I'll glue this so that the adhesive is above the score line on the front of the card. So watch, I'll line this up on the front of the card and we're hiding that crease, that uh, score line there, gluing this down and I'm gonna open it up and make sure that when you open up the card you see my sentiment. Yep, there it is. So now I can press this down, make sure it's straight and let it, let it dry. So now we have this fun sentiment that pops up there at the top. You can skip that if you want. In fact, I do on my other examples. Now I have one of my butterflies. I added some extra die cuts behind it for dimension and I'll glue that down kind of overlapping the hello sentiment. Okay, let's move to the inside of our card. Now I noticed that these cloud borders on the side, they're kind of narrow and thin. So I am making little splints to kind of go along with it, little supports. These are just cardstock scraps that I put adhesive on and I'm gluing to the back of those little edges. So see how it's just glued to the back there and that gives those side pieces a little more support. And I'll do this on the other side too. So if you're using a lighter weight cardstock or your supports here on the side are thin or narrow, be sure to add a support to it. Okay, so now for the fun part, you can add your butterflies however you want. I like to add some to the way back where the blue sky is, the way front, and then that extra cloud border in between. That way you really have a lot of dimension going on here. I did want one butterfly to move a little bit when you open the card. So I have a butterfly here where I'm taping a piece of acetate to the back. This is a long acetate strip, just a clear piece that I cut from some packaging. It happens to be a little bit thicker. Now I'm using double-sided tape, but I will not remove the release paper from the other side. Now I'm putting some tape on the other end of the acetate, and I'll pick this up and glue it behind that long cloud border die that we added earlier. So watch, he's just taped in there and he kind of flutters around in there. Anytime you add something with a piece of acetate, it'll move when you open it. You'll see me do this again later too. So I thought it was fun to add that one element in there. You could add more if you wanted to. So here is the completed card. When you take it out of the envelope, it looks like a normal card. I did stamp your incredible underneath the butterfly and that's from the same butterfly stamp set. When you open up the card, you have this display shadow box frame that is super cool. It's hard from this angle to show what it looks like standing on a desk, but it works great. I like how it has all those layers of dimension. Again, you could keep it simple if you wanted to. I did add some additional clouds to the background using a cat scrappiness cloud die set. And I added some little holographic hearts just for a bit of shine. I don't want to add gems on the inside because that's too much bulk, but by adding die cut holographic hearts, it catches the light nicely. And here's what it looks like when it's sitting on your desk. So you can write a personal message or even stamp more of your scene there on the bottom that lays flat. All right, let's do another example. This time it's five by seven, but a vertical card. Let's start by looking at the completed card first so you know the direction we're headed. I usually like to keep the front of these cards very simple since the focal point of the card is on the inside. This one, when you open it up, you have a window, you got the little butterfly that moves, and also a heart that floats on the inside. So I have some other tips and ideas to share with you, and this one was actually pretty quick to do. Now because of the long vertical design of this, we will have to assemble the base of the card a little bit differently than before, but it's easy. So for this one, we're starting with a piece of cardstock that is five by nine, and we're scoring two inches from each end. Then we can fold along those lines. Now, whenever you do a card with pop-up and you create a crease, make sure you crease it well and kind of fold it back and forth so that little crease or hinge will move freely. Okay, so now we need another piece of cardstock. This is six inches by five inches, and I'm scoring a half inch from each end. Now this is the piece that will pop up on the inside. Before we did two little cloud borders on the edge, this time I've got a solid piece, this large piece here, and we're gonna die cut from the center. So it's another option for assembling this. Okay, so from this piece that was six by five, I am die cutting a large circle from the center. You can do anything that's between those two crease lines that we created. Now let's glue these two folded pieces together. 
I'm putting liquid adhesive along this little flap up there, and I'm lining the crease of this flap up with the cut edge of the other piece. So we're basically creating a shadow box frame here. So I glued that right to that, make sure it lines up nicely. And then we'll do the same with the other flap. Put adhesive along that and line up the crease of this with the edge on the other end. So there you can see this is the pop-up feature of the card. You'll notice that this will flatten nicely. So watch, you can just take this and flatten it. That's something we want out of this because we want to be able to put it in an envelope. Now we need to adhere the back of the card to it. Now this is a little bit different than before, but this is the best way to do this large size card. So on the bottom of this frame, I'm putting liquid adhesive, and then I'm gluing it to the top edge of a five by seven piece of cardstock. That will form our card. So I'll make sure the edge of that five by seven piece of cardstock is lined up with the crease on our box that we're adding on top. Once it's lined up, you can just go ahead and flatten it. So it just flattens nicely and then put something heavy on it while it dries. So you have a five by seven vertical card and when you open it, you have this frame or display frame that pops up with that circle window. And remember you could use any die cut shape there. Next, I wanted to show you how to create that heart that kind of floats there in the back of the window. For this, again, we're using some acetate, just a piece of transparency. This one happens to be six inches long and about a half inch wide. I'm scoring a half inch from each end. If you do not have acetate, you could just use white cardstock here. You might see it a little bit more, but that's okay. Um, you can buy acetate. I'll link to some below that I really, really like, but I think it's a great thing to kind of save anything from thick packaging you may have and recycle that. Now I'm putting double-sided tape on both ends, on both of those little flaps. Now you could use liquid adhesive here. I just find double-sided tape is easier with acetate because acetate is so slippery. So now I have this long, thin piece of acetate and you have the adhesive on both of the flaps on the end. So kind of like on the bottom of the feet on the end. Now we're adding this inside of the window. This is something you could have done before, before gluing the card together, but I find it's best to do after. I'm placing that adhesive, the foot that has adhesive on the bottom, right kind of in the center of that area there. So see right there, it's glued right there. Really doesn't matter where you put it. But then you're gonna remove the release paper from the other end and put it opposite. So we're putting it towards the center of the top of our window. Now once you have it in place, you'll just press it down and you have this clear piece that's suspended across the middle. The card will still open and close very nicely, but you can adhere anything you want to that. Again, you could make that white cardstock and you wouldn't see it that much, but the acetate is really cool. Always make sure you can still close your card and open it nicely. So that's it for the pop-up feature of this card. Let's start decorating. First, I want to add that butterfly edge around the window. So I'm using this new Concord and Ninth Fluttering by Turnabout. This is definitely one of my favorite turnabouts they've ever done. It just gives such great results, and I'm a big fan of butterflies. So I'm going to quickly show you how to use a turnabout stamp. If you want to see this in more detail, I'll link to a video here on the top right. Okay, now turnabout stamps come with a guide. That's this clear piece here that has an X at the center. You're going to take your turnabout stamp, that's what's in my hand, and line it up, lay it down onto that guide. It's very easy to do. You just line up the black printed image with your stamp. Now you can see it's lined up there. Now you're gonna take your turnabout jig. This is a product that Concord and Ninth sells. It's very cheap, that makes this easy to do. But you can also make your own jig, and I'll link to a video that shows that here on the top right. There's an X imprinted on the jig and that black X on the guide. You're gonna line up those two X's, super easy. I like to put little tape to tape them together so that the X's stay lined up. Now you're gonna take this and put this in the bottom corner of your stamping tool. Close the door on your stamping tool, remove the guide and the jig, and you can start stamping. I then remove the guide from the jig and save that for the next time I wanna use this stamp set. Okay, so now we've got the jig and you're gonna tape onto that temporarily any cardstock that you want to do your stamping on. It doesn't matter what size as long as it's smaller than six by six. I have a five inch by five inch piece because that's what I need for this card. And I'm just temporarily adhering that to the center of the jig. Okay, now if you look closely at the jig, there's a one printed on the top right corner. 
and that's right on the jig itself, that just helps to know what position you're on. Really doesn't matter what nar number you start with. You just want to be sure to turn it each time after you stamp. So I stamped it once and now I'm switching it to two. I cleaned off my stamp and now I'm stamping with a second color. And you'll start to see how your images line up. After I stamp this one, I'll turn it until the three is at the top and I'll start stamping that. Each time I clean my stamp in between. And notice I'm using light inks today. I wanted to go for soft colors. I often use bright colors. Wanted to change it up. But when I use soft colors, I do double stamp or triple stamp to make them a bit darker. That's just a thing I do. You could do one layer if you prefer. And then I turned to position four and I stamped with a pink ink. And there we have a pattern created. Super cute, doesn't take long. And man, it's much better to create your own pattern paper because you can make as many as you want than to add to your pattern paper stash. Now I'm going through with the individual image that stamps the centers of the body, the little body of the butterflies. And I stamped that with a gray ink. I repeated this so I would have two pieces, one for the inside of the card and one for the outside. Isn't that sweet? There are also little images you can add to it, which you'll see me do later. Okay, so one of these, which is five by five, I'm die cutting that same circle that we used to die cut the window. Remember that we die cut from our card? using the same circle die to cut from the center of this. I'm using a little butterfly trail stamp to add little details to some of the butterflies. And then we can glue this right around the window frame on the inside of our card. Again, I use liquid adhesive so I can wiggle it around until I'm happy with the placement. Now we can do our floating heart. I have two pink hearts die cut and I'm putting a piece of tape down the center of one of the hearts. I'll remove the release paper and then glue this so the acetate is in the front. So I'm gluing it to the back of the acetate. Now I'll take my other heart and glue it on the front so the acetate is sandwiched between. Now it looks like this heart is just kind of floating there between the back of the frame and the front. Now I have an extra butterfly left over from before. I stamped a sentiment onto one of the little sentiment strips and glued it to the front. I have another thin strip of transparency or acetate and I'm going to make this little butterfly wiggle around too. So again, we're going to make that piece of acetate stick out from the bottom of our die cut. This time I'm sandwiching the piece of acetate between two butterfly die cuts. So I have it sticking out the bottom of this die cut. I'll put glue on top of it and then add our pretty butterfly die cut on top of that. If you do this and find that your acetate is too thin and it just kind of flops over, you can double up the acetate strips that you have sticking out and that'll give it better support. Okay, so now on the bottom of this, I'm putting some double-sided tape. You could use regular tape here, by the way. I use double-sided tape as regular tape by keeping the release paper on the back. So I put tape on there. Now I'll take this and slide it so I tape it to the back side of the circle window. So now he just sticks up there and floats in front of the heart. It just sticks straight up and it kind of wiggles around when you open up the card. I did want to add a circle frame around our circle window. So I took two circle dies. One is the same size that we used to cut the window and the other is slightly larger. I ran those through the die cut machine together to create this thin silver circle frame. And now I'm gluing it right around the window. It just gives it a nice finished look. Now the front of this card is super simple. I just created this little strip that goes across the center and I'm gluing it so that it's right up against that crease of the card. Remember, you don't want to glue something across the crease because the card won't pop up, pop up then. So this is right up against the crease, just a little bit past it. And it just adds a little bit of that butterfly pattern to the front of the card. Now here is a look at the completed card. I did add the So Grateful die cut in black. And then I did a heart in pink, which I later changed out to black. You can see the cute butterfly pattern paper that we created with the turnabout stamp. And we even stamped those little butterfly trails to add interest. I have a little bit of pink cardstock and silver cardstock along the top and bottom edge for a bit of definition. Now this one, when you open it, it pops up and you have this circle window. And inside of it is a heart that floats. And in front of that is a butterfly and sentiment that floats. I like the message on this one. I think it's a good one to give to a friend and let them have on display to remember how much you appreciate them. And here is a look at what it looks like when it's sitting on a desk. Okay, now let's go to our third and final card. This is a normal A2 card size. The overall card size is four and a quarter by five and a half. This is what the card looks like when you take it out of the envelope. 
but when you open it, there's a fun rainbow surprise scene on the inside that pops up. All right, let's get started by making the card base of this. It's really easy. We're starting with a typical note card that is top folding. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches top folding. You're gonna open it up, and on the front, you're scoring one and a quarter inch from the edge. Very easy, it just creates this little flap on the bottom front of your card. And by the way, I did white cardstock for all my examples. You could definitely do these in colored if you wanted. Okay, the next piece you need is four and a quarter by five and a quarter inches. And you're gonna score this one a half inch from each end. This will be the part that pops up on the inside. On my first example, I did those two thin strips on the side and had that pop up. This time, I'm doing a solid area, like I did in the last one, and we'll just die cut from the center to create a window. So you could die cut a circle here, you could die cut a heart, whatever. You could even just die cut a square. But I thought I would use those small cloud border dies that I showed you earlier in the video and use it to die cut a window at the center of this. Now, these short dies make it easy to do this, and I really like the results. But if you have longer dies, you could do partial die cutting, which I'll show you in a moment. But notice each time I line up the end of the border die with where the die cutting stopped the last time. So I run those through. Now this one's a little bit too long, so I need to do partial die cutting to connect the cloud at the top with the cloud in the bottom. So I'm gonna tape it there. When I put it through my die cut machine, I'm leaving that little bit hanging out. So by leaving that part of the die hanging out, it won't cut there. So you just use whatever machine you have, but leave hanging out from the plates the part you don't want to cut. And check it out, we have this little cloud opening that I think is super cool. And again, we still have those flaps at the top and the bottom. Now the right and left side, I'm worried are a little too weak to support the card when you open it up. So I'm adding these little supports to the back. I did that on my first card too. It's not always necessary. It just depends on how thick your cardstock is and how narrow you make those sides. For the inside, I'm using the Concord and Ninth Rainbow Stitches and Strings die set. I love this set. It has the arches to die cut a rainbow, and then there are faux stitching that, dies that you can use on the inside of the arches to add detail. There's a cloud with faux stitching that you can use together or separate. There are also dies to mimic the look of the string art rainbows that many people are doing. So you can see these three arches here, and there's also fringe to put at the bottom. Over here on the top right is an image Concord and Ninth set I could use of a card example, and then the rainbow art, string art that many people are doing. It's kind of meant to mimic that, but it looks cool on its own. Anything to kind of change up your basic rainbow. And those little fringe dies, I'm excited because if you flip them over, they look like really detailed grass. So you could create a grass border with those, just lay, line up a few of them. Then there's a Concord and Ninth Rainbow and Stitches and Strings stamp set that coordinates. The arch on the sentiments matches the arch of the rainbow, so you can create some great cards with that. I didn't use this stamp set in the end, but I wanted to share how it matches up nicely. I like that I could cut the arch alone or the arch with the faux stitching to add that detail. I appreciate when companies think about this when they create the product so you can get many different looks. Next, I need to create the little uh, cloud border that pops up halfway through the frame. We're gonna do those pop-up squares once again like we did earlier. This piece is one by three inches, and I'm scoring at three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, and two and a quarter. And then we can fold along those score lines. And I'll repeat that with another piece. Three inches long, you score at three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, and two and a quarter. These again are those common pop-ups that many people use to create pop-up features inside of a card. I'm just putting them inside of our frame. Now we can assemble our card. I've opened up our card and below that flap, I'm putting a piece of light blue cardstock that's slightly smaller than four inches by four inches. That will be showing when you look through our little frame. Now we can add those little pop-up squares. Now before I showed you that I added them after I assembled my card completely. I wanted to show you could do them now. I do think it's better to do after, but you can definitely do it at this point if you prefer. So you glue one edge right up against the crease of the card and then do that with the same on the other. So I'm creating those little squares that sit in the crease on the card. Once that's dry, we can add adhesive to the flap on the other end. So I'm putting adhesive right on this flap and I'll just curl these pieces until they're glued to the back of the card 
and that forms those little squares that sit right against the crease of the card. That's our little pop-up feature on the inside. I'll then close that and let it dry completely. Now we can add the front part of our card onto it, the front of that frame that will be on the inside. Again, I'm doing it in a different order from before just to show you could do that. I put adhesive on that long flap and I line up the crease of the cloud piece right up against the front edge of the card. Now once that's dry, we can open up our card. So I have it open up here, put adhesive on the other flap of the cloud piece and just wrap this around to the base of the card. See, I thought it was easier with the way I did it before, but this works just fine. So whatever works best for you, you can try. And now you can see we have our card forming with that pop-up shadow box card on the inside. You always want to lay it flat to make sure that it closes. That's the most important thing for any card. Okay, I have another cloud border die cut. That's the width of the card. I'm putting glue on the front of those pop-ups and then I'm sliding in that border die cut to glue to the front of it. That way this cloud border die sits halfway between the back of the card and the front of our pop-up. Just adds that dimension. You can skip it if you want. I'm putting adhesive on the bottom front of our rainbow arches and I'm gluing them to the back of that cloud border that we just added on the inside. I like to start with the inside one first, the yellow, then add the orange, and then add the pink to it. And now this will pop up and our rainbow will kind of float there in the center of our shadow box. Okay, now let's work on the front of the card. On this, I'm using the Concord and Ninth Sketched Dots Turnabout Stamp Set. This is a new one. It creates these little sketch dots and you can create a background that's colorful. It's a great universal stamp set that could be used on many different styles. Now I have set up my turnabout stamp just like I did before, same process. This time on my jig, I have temporarily adhered a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. Once you've done a turnabout stamp, they're very easy to use over and over. I again will link to a more detailed video about turnabout stamps here on the top right. Here I'm just going through and adding the four stamped images, rotating each time and each time in a different color. It's fun to create any pattern you want on any color of cardstock with any colors of inks. This time I'm using Concord and Ninth inks and I did a pink, an orange, a yellow, and a blue to match what's happening on the inside of the card. I trimmed that panel down and glued it onto our card so that it would sit just above that crease line that we've created. I've also created this little border strip where I have stamped a sentiment and also added a thin strip of holographic cardstock. Above this border, I'll add black die cuts that spell high. Okay, on the inside, I really wanted to add something shiny. So I created this holographic heart die cut from one of the dies in the rainbow set. And I will, on the back of this, add a thin uh, transparent or acetate strip, just like we've done many times. This will then be floating again inside of our card. I then took another die cut and put it on top so the end of the acetate is sandwiched between. I'll now use tape to tape that end of the acetate right behind the cloud formation on the front of our frame. And now we have a little heart that kind of floats there. I did also add a little Your Incredible Sentiment strip there. I think it's nice to have a message on the inside so that when the person has it on display, they see it. All right, so here is a look at the completed card, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I have that fun dot stamping on the top that matches the inside of my card nicely. That, that thin strip of holographic cardstock, I think adds some fun shine. And when you open it up, you have the rainbow surprise inside. Now remember, you could add so much to this. You could put hearts, you could put birds, butterflies, anything. But I wanted to keep it pretty simple to show that you can keep this design clean and simple. Now you can see that little heart that kind of floats there and how the rainbow is kind of halfway between the front and the back of the shadow frame. So these frame ideas can be used in so many different ways with so many different products. I encourage you to give it a try. Once you've done one or two following the dimensions that I share, you'll be able to create your own in no time flat and use lots of products you have on hand. If you are interested in the things I use today, I do have them linked in my YouTube description below, including all these great Concord and Ninth products. Now, this video, when I put it up, is on Mother's Day, and I do want to give everybody a big hug. I know Mother's Days are hard for many people. Please know that I'm thinking of you, sending you a big hug.
If you are interested in other videos that have similar techniques, I'll have them linked here at the end, along with a link to my blog where there's much more information. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you again very soon.